During our federal court hearing in West Palm Beach, Florida, moments ago, Judge Bruce Reinhardt says he is inclined to release parts of the affidavit connected to that search. He says some portions of it could be redacted, but it's unclear which part. Let's bring in ABC News investigative reporter Catherine Falders, who was in the courtroom, as well as former federal prosecutor and head of litigation at BitRex, David Maria. Good to see you both. Catherine, let me get right to you. Give us more details on the judge's ruling. So Judge Reinhardt is one of the few people who has seen and read this affidavit. He says that he's not inclined to uh, keep the whole thing under seal, that there are, could be portions of this that he could reasonably uh, believe that reasonably could be released. Now, we should make clear that he has not ruled on this, Kenneth. He has not said uh, that it should be fully unsealed. Uh, the government now has a week to go back and go through this affidavit, which was described as lengthy, to then propose their redactions. The judge said they would then have some sort of conference. Maybe the judge would propose his own redactions and they try to uh, come to something that they could agree on here. Well, the government's argument in there was uh, to keep the whole thing under seal. They said if they released this with any redactions, it would essentially be meaningless to the media because it wouldn't say much. Uh, look, they argued that this could compromise uh, witnesses uh, that have spoken to them that maybe will speak to them in this ongoing investigation, that it's still in the early stages and it could compromise any future action that they take uh, as it relates to this investigation and potentially others. So again, not a ruling, but the comments made by the judge inside the courtroom. Thanks for checking us and keeping us honest on that. Catherine, you mentioned that next Thursday, the government will file their proposed redactions. Do you know the potential impact on the investigation here? Look, I think from the government's perspective, their proposed redactions will, there will be a lot of redactions in, in what they propose here. And they say that in terms of the impact of releasing such a, such a thing in terms of the affidavit, that that would impact the witnesses, investigative steps, that it could compromise matters of national security here. It was interesting because what Jay Bratt, who's the head of DOJ's counterintelligence section of the Department of Justice, he was in court arguing this. That is very rare. It showed uh, how much the government thinks that this should remain under seal, especially as it relates uh, to a former president and especially witnesses. He focused on the grand jury uh, investigations that were ongoing. He said there were there was significant grand jury material. And Kenneth, uh, we were talking a lot about the witnesses in there. There was some question about whether uh, that their names could be redacted uh, so that their identities aren't revealed. And the government's argument there was that there's only some witnesses that know very specific information that they've talked to. Uh, essentially, the government was saying that that just wouldn't be possible possible to shield their identities and could compromise uh, their safety. And David, in this hearing, that DOJ official that Catherine just mentioned, Jay Brad, uh, he said that the government has, quote, found probable cause that there was a violation of one of the obstruction statutes as it relates to the search of Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. What should we make of that? Well, obviously, the whole purpose of the affidavit in general was to establish probable cause. So I think that's what he's referring to in terms of what's in the evidence. I can't imagine at this point he'd be explaining what they found and whether it substantiated that. But that's just another consideration. One of the statutes they cited in the uh, in the uh, search warrant itself was uh, 18 U.S.C. 1519, which has to do with uh, obstruction and destruction of materials in connection with a federal investigation. That for the government would be a reason why this stuff should remain sealed, because if they think there's a potential that obstruction and destruction has happened in the past, there, there, there could be an argument to be made that it could happen again. And David, the DOJ um, also argued in court that there is nothing of substance for the media if the judge unsealed with redactions, that it doesn't serve the media's interest to give them something that is, quote, meaningless. Is that a good or bad argument by Jay Brad? Uh, I guess it's hard for DOJ to say what the press and what the public would be interested in. So I'm not sure if that carries as much weight as some of the other arguments about what could happen with the materials, uh, what could happen with witnesses going forward, the chilling effect it may have on witnesses, especially in light of events like last week at the uh, at the FBI office in I think it was in, in the Cincinnati area. Yeah, and Catherine, you reported that the judge was skeptical of that media interest argument. What was it like in the courtroom? Well, look, he seemed at first to be a little bit skeptical uh, of the media argument as these attorneys uh, were speaking. But I, I think it's just worth 
pointing out that he, he, he can't really say or express whether it be the skepticism, uh, the reasons why uh, he thinks that this should remain under seal. Neither or, uh, portions of it should not remain under seal. And, and DOJ can't really either because the whole point here is that there, it could compromise some national security issues here. So like they were giving details uh, on, on their reasoning and why they think that. But look, I think you heard the media argument in there. And it's important, Kenneth, to point out that the media lawyers still said we understand why some of this has to remain under seal for various reasons, for national security reasons, potentially for witnesses. But the reality is, and the argument that was made in there by the media is that uh, there, this is a high-profile case uh, that it, there is a right to know here, especially because that warrant has been released. And one more point to make here: the Trump, one of the Trump lawyers, was in court today. Uh, Christina Bob. She said they wouldn't be filing anything. Uh, she said that they were there to watch. Uh, Trump has publicly called on this to be released, but he has not filed. His team has not filed anything in court. There is no uh, position that they have filed uh, in the court. So this is just what he said publicly, Kenneth. And we should point out ABC News, part of that group of media organizations trying to get that affidavit unsealed. Uh, David, looking at the way the government has approached this investigation, saying unsealing the affidavit and making it public could cause significant and irreparable damage, is it possible for the former president to face charges? Again, uh, it's it's really early at this stage to, to opine on that. The statutes that they cited in the in the effort, not the affidavit, the warrant itself, um, you know, there there are elements in them that if met, they wouldn't be hard to, to bring a case and potentially prosecute it. They relate to uh, destruction or alteration in 1519. Uh, if they can show that, that that you know, is something that wouldn't be hard to prove with the evidence they may have. Uh, the Espionage Act, the USC 7, uh, 18 USC 793, has very specific elements, including whether it, there was a request to return it to the appropriate officer if he had defense materials. If those things happened and, and they can prove that, uh, they, they may have a, a, a good case to bring, uh, whether it should be brought in some of the other circumstances, if he just failed to return presidential records, uh, if there was a miscommunication, uh, that may be a different story. All right. And just to put a button on this, Catherine, again, next week, at the end of next week is when we should learn uh, what will, you know, more about this affidavit with redactions. Yeah, DOJ has uh, one week to file a brief. They will submit their proposed redactions, and then it goes from there. The judge could submit his redactions as well. But one week until we see that from the Department of Justice. Got it. All right, Catherine, David, appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.